Okay. Uh, oh, should yeah, we... Man. Just a right. sec. I have to, oh, have to say that I got it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so it's, it is my pleasure today to introduce Pierre Lochac, who joins us from the Mathematical Institute at Jusu. Um, Pierre Lochac is well known for his contributions to the theory of descent d'enfant and growth and Teichmuller theory. Uh, in addition, he's a founding member of the Growth and Circle, which has a very interesting website devoted to the life and works of Alexander Growth and um, so today he will speak to us about a topological approach to Growth and Teichmuller theory. Thank you. Thank you for, first of all, thank you, of course, for inviting me uh, to, your, to your beautiful seminar. And um, so you mentioned this and I'll find Groth and Teichmuller in, a, in, a, in one breath. The fact is, uh, Groth and Teichmuller is I think it's it's very it's a, a vast vast generalization of this this and enfant, which is already uh, in the esquisse, and I think you've learned you've you've heard much more about this and enfant than about Kurt Nick Teichmuller. So uh, I'm I'm not I will I'm not ambitioning to bridge the gap actually between uh, this and enfant and uh, what I call a uh, topological Rotnik Teichmüller, because it's uh, it's really enormous. I mean, it's it's, it's very far away. Uh, so I, I would rather, well, first, first, I'm sorry to be a bit self-centered here, but on my webpage you will find all the all the all the text you need uh, to go to sort of details plus reference list. So I'm going to try and and tell you about some important. Um, important concepts, important uh, stories, important ideas, and uh, of course I'll try to be more specific at times, but uh, I cannot possibly hope to uh, include even even a, even a, a small portion of uh, what what does bridge the, the gap between these two these two things. So let me start with a story and. <laughs> And what I, I think is a crucial bifurcation for those of you who have read uh, Recolte Semaille, which is which is being translated by MIT into English, maybe, maybe by Leila. And uh, in Recolte Semaille, you know, there is a long uh, there is a long analysis, psychological analysis of Pierre of, of, of the behavior of Pierre de Ligne. And what I'm going to tell you first is that there is a crucial bifurcation in the theory, which you, you may summarize this between the linear versus the nonlinear theory, and which you may see as somehow an epilogue to Recolte Semai. So, as you all know, uh, Grotenich Teichmuller theory was, uh, let's say, there is a blueprint of it in, uh, in uh, the Esquisse d'un Programme, which is 1984. And then the, there is a, a, a paper of genius, really a paper of genius in, 18, in 1989 by Drinfeld, which you, which I encourage everybody to read. I mean, really read because you have to read it line by line because every line is important and every line is, is uh, suffused with mathematics, too much mathematics almost. Uh, and this is where it really starts. So in Gott, in, in Drinfeld's paper, which is really hard to read, but it really pays to read it, um, there is, um, uh, let's say, Drinfeld does explain and also realize partly what Grotendieck is talking about. So the first idea uh, that, the first idea is that, which is far from being obvious, is that Grotendieck is talking about modular stacks of curves, and that's we'll, we'll be talking about them uh, later. And, and Drinfeld immediately, even without saying it, says that in genus zero, modular stacks of the, the, the theory of moduli uh, stacks or moduli spaces of, of uh, curves is very close to braided category. So I'm not going to explain why. So for instance, uh, you, you will find it, for instance, in the papers, in the early papers on my web page and in references. So what Drinfeld does, with, and he was very much inspired by uh, the, the then Leningrad school of uh, quantum scattering, uh, led by, uh, what's his name, uh, Fadiev, Ludwig Fadiev. So what he does is, he says, we're going to deform 
um, associativity. So deforming associativity in a, an appropriate category, say basically a braided category, a braided, um, how do you call them, uh, category with, with a tensor category, deforming associativity is very, was it, it's, it's by itself an idea of uh, almost of genius because nobody before Trinfeld had really paid attention to associativity. Associativity was something that goes without saying. Everything is associative, period. And now, Golden Dictatsmuller in this uh, genus zero and I'll say pro unipotent, uh, let's say, uh, setting is essentially about deforming uh, associativity. Now, well, uh, Deline published a paper in 1990, one year after Brinfeld, which is about P1 minus three points. In that paper, it says, there's a, there a line which is a bifurcation in the, in the whole theory. There's a line in the paper where he says, I don't know what to do with the, Profinite ideas that Grotendieck has been putting forward because I just don't know what to do with profinite, uh, profinite uh, completions because they are highly nonlinear objects and there are no tools. There is no toolbox for this highly nonlinear completion. But I know, I, Deline, know what to do with what is called pro unipotent completion. Pro unipotent completion has to do with rational. Uh, homotopy theory, which things uh, which were developed by Drinfeld, by sorry, by Deligne and and, other, and many other people. So I know what to do with the pro unipotent completion, and the pro unipotent completion. That's the irony of it. Is essentially what is done, what is uh, known as motives. Very tiny part of the motivic program, which is gigantic. Which and this this tiny part is now called. Um, is now called uh, twist, uh, sorry, uh, Tate, Tate mo mixed Tate motives. So in that paper, uh, Delin starts the, the, the theory of mixed Tate motives and he says, he says, now, I don't know what to do with, he said, Gortonik explained me this and that, but I don't know what to do with it. So let's pass to another type of completion. It sounds very technical, but it's not. It's like linearizing the whole thing. It's you go from a nonlinear idea, which was Grotendieck, to a linear idea, which is um, which is uh, also contained in Drinfeld, but also contained in uh, in Deligne. And nowadays, what people call Grotendieck Teichmuller theory is almost always genus zero pro unipotent version. When you see the group in many papers by by Kontsevich, for instance. And uh, you see these, um, these, uh, these, these, and you you have, uh, and and you have, uh, say, Grotendieck Teichmuller theory in deformation, modern deformation theory. It's always genus zero pro unipotent, because this is the one. This is the theory where you can have Lie algebra, because if you have a pro unipotent group, it has a Lie algebra. And actually, the category of pro unipotent group is equivalent to the category of the pro nil, of pro -nil potent algebras. So you do, you, you then you can work with pro -nil potent algebra, and then you have multi zetas, and then you have all sorts of things, and it's very interesting. And it's deformation theory, and and it's uh, formality results, and it's uh, all sorts of things. But it's not. I insist, it's not what Goltenik had in mind. What Goltenik had in mind was something which is in some sense, well, not in some sense, which is more difficult because the toolbox is missing. So what we've been trying to develop are, are tools in this nonlinear setting. So the nonlinear setting essentially excludes things like uh, cohomology, like uh, rational homotopy, like all these things, because they simply don't apply. They, they simply don't work. I mean, and also, you have to take um, you have to take uh, modulized spaces of all of every genus. So I know it's a, it's a bit long, but it's uh, it's a very crucial thing to say that there are two types of theories. One of them is much much more popular, 
because it's everything which has to do with multi zetas and so on. And it's things where you can compute. And what I'm going to talk about is the thing which is, I think, what really Grotenik, uh, well, I, no, I'm not saying Grotenik had in mind, but it's the, the thing of which you read in the esquisse. Uh, but it's it's very different. Also, if you want a justification uh, for doing so, it's not because Grotendieck said it. It's also because Grotendieck had this dream that you could have a, you could have a, a geometric description of the uh, absolute Gower group of Q, and this you can do only if you do if you go to the Pro, 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 pro finite setting, because the pro unipotent setting, in the pro unipotent setting, GQ is not included in uh, in, uh, in in GT. So GT is called Nick Teichmiller, GT of Q. So GT is a, is a linear algebraic group of, defined over Q, and the Q, it has Q points, and and you have uh, and, and the Grotnik and the sorry the Gower group of Q is not included in the GT of Q. In fact, you have uh, what is called the uh, Delini Hara uh, algebra, which is the, the say the, the the trace of the Gower group. But it's uh, as as the name indicates, at best what you can reach is the Gower group of the maximal uh, nil maximal pro nil potent extension of Q, which is like like a tiny uh, a tiny quotient of the absolute Gaba group. Now, in this in the in in the theory, uh, I'll be talking about, or I'll give some let's say some 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 clues about. Uh, you're trying to actually uh, get the 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 whole Gaba group, and the Gaba group of Q is included in in GT. So, what was was uh, what was the whole starting point of Grotenik? One starting point, which is completely naive, is to say, okay, he said, pi one is the only uh, is the only invariant in uh, in say classical uh, classical algebraic topology, which is not abelian, but per se, uh, all the higher Homotopy groups are abelian, cohomology, homology, K theory, everything is, is linear. Say linear is, is to me linear, nil potent, pro nil potent, pro solvable, everything is uh, all these things are say on the side of the of the linear. So the only non-abelian uh, invariant is pi one. So normally a normal mathematician, when you say that, is to say, okay, it's very good, but so what? Uh, but what Grotendieck did, it, this in, in, in the hands or in, in, the, in, the, in the brain of Grotendieck transformed into a huge thing. The huge thing is an abelian geometry, section conjecture, and Grotendieck Teichmüller. So now let's see, let's see what, what's happening. First, you have uh, the you have the famous uh, short exact sequence, Gawa short exact sequence. So, so this, the, the story will be about automorphisms of the pi one. So let's first, let's first go a little bit quickly uh, through what that, that part of, of anabelian geometry, which is really relevant, which is birational anabelian geometry. So if I have a X, which is, well, as, as, as I've written, a K of field, K bar separable closure, X over K, a scheme, which is normal, then you have this short exact sequence, which basically says that the, the covers of the etal covers of X are of two types, those which are geometric, and that's called pi one geom of X. That is, they are covers of X when you extend the scalars to k bar, k can be any field. I mean, the characteristic can be positive. And then, and then this is an, an extension of the Gower group of k. And the Gower group of k, and this is also the beauty of it, the Gower group of k, also the pi one of something, namely the pi one of the spectrum of the field. But you don't have to even uh, know that to say that, okay, uh, this is one of the main results in SGA1. Then that 
completely that formally, like for any short exact sequences, give you an outer Galois action like this. Now you can you can consider the pi one, the, the geometric pi one. So to x you associate the geometric pi one as, as above. You can construct, you can consider it as a functor, which goes from normal schemes over k to profinite groups, to profinite groups. Oh, sorry, modulo inners. I, 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 for some reason, I don't see the, the right side of, of the screen. I don't know why. So profile group modulo inner automorphisms. And you can ask, what is the automorphism group of that functor that is an automorphism is a, is a, is a natural transformation to itself? So the answer, it took, like I don't know, thirty years to obtain the answer. And the answer is more is more uh, more precise than that, and actually it's stronger. But uh, among other things, you prove the thing which is quite important, which is uh, which is uh, written here, uh, namely that the automorphism group of pi one geom equals G K. So let me comment on this. So this is a. Uh, there's a first uh, uh, a beautiful idea of Fyodor Bogomolov. Then there's Florian Pop, and there's uh, also there's also a very interesting uh, recent work by Adam Topaz. So what does this say? In some sense, in some sense, it fulfills Goldenberg's dream. Namely, on the right side, on the right hand side, you have an arith a purely arithmetic Galois group, the Galois group of, of, of the field. Oh, sorry, no, it, it's not for any field. Here, here I should say k number fields. K, let's say k an extension of, it's more general, but let's say k an extension of q, a finite extension of q that is a number field. So on the right hand side, you have a purely arithmetic uh, group object. And on the left hand side, in principle, if you want to extend the, the word a little bit, you have a purely geometric thing, namely, for every uh, x, uh, you take its geometric uh, uh, fundamental group, which means you take only, which, which deals only with the, 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 the covers, the etal covers of x. So it's the automorphism group of the etal covers of x, uh, which actually are etal covers of x tensor k bar. So then they're not, they do not, in, they do not include any uh, arithmetic extension. So on the left hand side, with a little bit of uh, cum grano salis, uh, it's a purely ex a geometric thing. And on the right hand side, a purely arithmetic thing. So in some sense, again, this is what Gautengik had in mind. Problem? Of course, you don't learn much about the right hand side by this equality, because what is the left hand side? You have to take all the x's in the world not, in fact, you don't. I mean, there you, you can you can restrict the sample a lot, but say here you can you have to take many 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 axes schemes many let's say quasi projective smooth quasi projective varieties. Actually, you can take even P two the, the projective plane minus lines, so it's it's much less. But uh, still, you have to take many, many sort of a, a large sample of X's to achieve this. Now, the next idea is maybe we need less of these X's. Maybe we, let, we need a, a smaller sample of this to get the same result. And the, the fantastic idea of Norton Dick is that actually of course, it doesn't put it this way. This is after 40 years of work and uh, by, by various people and so on. But, but okay, genius is genius, and that's what it in, and well, it amounts to. I mean, at least uh, you can take x equals all the moduli stacks of curves. So instead of taking uh, all the x's, you take the moduli stacks of curves. Uh, and now on the left hand side. What you will get is it is the Gorton Dick Dashmuller group, of which we'll speak. And the, the left hand side becomes manageable. The right hand side is still GQ, but we don't know the equality. 
the equality, you know that you know that GT contains GQ. That is, GQ gives you because GQ always gives you. It's it's completely functorial. It gives you uh, it gives you an auto, it gives you automorphisms of uh, of the of the geometric pi ones of everything by by uh, by the short exact sequence. And it respects all the possible uh, geometric uh, geometric uh, morphisms because because it's defined over Q. Everything is defined over Q, but we don't know the equality. So this was called IOM for Iara Oda Matsumoto. It was a conjecture for a long time. It was proved not so long ago, and there are many variants. And it's very important. It's the main result in some sense. The main Let's say no. Let's say it's the main, uh, the most striking results in uh, birational and abelian geometry. And so the companion theory would be, or the other theory would be, a theory where you know the left hand side, but you don't know that the two sides are equal, and that the two sides are equal is the dream uh, that the GT equals GQ. Is like the, the dream result or the Fields Medal result if you're young enough or the whatever result in the theory. So, um, so if you return, so why was uh, okay? What well, let, let's return for to this and on just for 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 just not for too long. But what why was Kortendieck? Uh, struck by Biely theorem. Why is it striking? Because Biely theorems, Biely, Grotenich was used to um, having uh, Galois representations. Okay, so if you have an X, uh, if you have an X, which is anything like like any scheme basically on on a field, then you have you can have the etal uh, uh, cohomology groups defined by Grotendieck, and then you have an action of the Gawa group, and that give, not an action, you have a representation because the thing is a, it's a vector space. But of course you have an enormous kernel, okay? All these, all these uh, things are uh, finite dimensional vector spaces and you have an enormous kernel of, 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 the, of, of these representation of the Gawa group. Now the thing which was extremely, extremely, Striking for Grotendieck is that what, what Biely theorem tells you is that you can have an action of the Galois group, which is faithful, so it has no kernel, and something which is not well, which is big but not so big, namely the profinite completion of the group of the of the which we'll we'll see below on the of the of the free group on two generators. Now, when you have this, you say, how do I generalize P1 minus three points? Some mathematicians would say, well, I take P1 minus N points, which, <laughs> which is uh, the thing, the obvious thing to do. And actually there had been some studies of the action on the P1 of Pi1 of P1 minus N points. Now Grosnick said, no, the, the Q1 minus three points is M04. That is, it classifies the, the configurations of four points on the Riemann sphere. Why? Because you take the, the cross ratio, okay? So if you take the cross ratio uh, and you with appropriate uh, conventions, you see that the configuration of four points on, on the sphere which is exactly the definition of zero four, um, uh, is uh, are classified by P one minus three points because uh, well, because that's the way it is. I I I I I pass very quickly on very difficult theorems. For instance, it's not at all clear that there is only one conformal up to up to equivalent. There is only one conformal structure. On the Riemann sphere, this is a very well. It was a very difficult theorem, actually. It's part of uh, it's part of uh, could be Poincaré and, and others, but okay. So that M03 is one point is a very difficult theorem from the 19th end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. 
But okay, let, let's leave this aside. Then M04 equals P1 minus, P1 minus 3 point is M04. Now, how do you, how do you generalize M04? Uh, well, you generalize, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the main ideas in the ASCIS. You generalize it to the MGNs, which are the moduli uh, spaces of, uh, of, uh, of curves. Of, of, then I'll, I'll come back a little more specifically of genus G with N mark points. The next incredible intuition is that, okay, so we take as our sample of, uh, it's not exactly varieties, it's not exactly scheme, they are one stack exactly. Uh, if, if N is small, this is not a scheme, this is a stack, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and I'll see, I'll say it a little more later. So the next situation is, okay, so now I have to compute or to, to, to have this automorphism, automorphism of all the pi one of the, all of the MGNs for G, G varies from zero to infinity and varies to from, let's say zero to infinity. I mean, I want, things to be to be uh, hyperbolic but it's okay so the incredible the next incredible intuition is that this group is can be described by a finite number of not relations they are actually equations and again this is the Galton detachment group the Galton detachment group will come in this setting which is not what I call topological uh, Galton detachment theory but which is let's say the original thing, which we have uh, made uh, completely explicit. And this is the two level principle. That is, if you, if you know what happens for the four spaces, which are down the here, M04, M0, M11, M05, and M12, which are the moduli spaces of uh, dimension one and two, because the dimension of a moduli space is 3G minus three plus N, uh, then, then you know everything that is, the group does not change, the group stabilizes. Um, so let's return, because there are so many, I mean, it's true that there are very many objects. Let's return to the basic objects and let's, let's give a tour of the basic objects of quantum dictatorial theory. So first you have SGN, you start with the surface of genus G, with n labeled and respectively, so I put square brackets when they're not labeled. So the points can be points or they can be cusps or they can be holes. Let's say cusp and holes are the same topologically. And the thing which is another thing, and there's so many, which is another remark, which is another general remark is that uh, the, the, the in that theory, the quote unquote miracle is that, uh, is that rigidity happens all by itself. That is you go from topology to uh, hyperbolic geometry, to conformal geometry, to complex geometry, to, uh, to, uh, to algebraic geometry, to arithmetic geometry with the same objects. And you have no choice because normally everything is very, I mean, if you have a, if you have a topological object, clearly it won't become so suddenly arithmetic. But, and that's what struck Grotendieck also with Desson Enfant. It's totally rigid. You start with something which is just topological, and then you get something which is completely, which will have arithmetic content. Here, the, uh, I put V uh, between coma because, uh, because to inverted commas, because it's, uh, up to diffeomorphism, there is only one. Well, okay, you can quibble up to homeomorphism, blah, blah, blah. SGN is supposed to have a C1 structure and you take diffeomorphism, but okay, that's for, that's, these things are, okay, uh, sort of well-known. There is only one topological surface and a cusp and a hole is the same at the level of topology. So then given S of SGN or, then you have the moduli space of these surfaces, which classifies 
it depends if it depends what sort of things you do. Again, you can be hyperbolic, you can be conformal, you can be complex, you can be algebraic. So it's it's a bit complicated, but basically it classifies every, every time it classifies the equivalence uh, classes of uh, say conformal structures, for instance, on SGN. So if you are uh, say a complex analyst, you say that that such spaces are complex or befalls. Uh, if you do algebraic geometry, there are algebraic stacks over Z, but in the theory, we, you only consider them over Q, which if, you're, if you do algebraic geometry, you will say it's a generic fiber. Uh, so you only consider it over Q. So the complex dimension, as it, it's, it's also, so as a complex or befalls or as a as a as a as a stack over whatever field the dimension is 3g minus 3 plus n then then these things as a and then these things are i mean these mgns they are k pi ones that is all the all the all the high homotopy groups vanish. This is also important. This is also very important because uh, as you remember, I said uh, the first remark, the first sort of trivial remark, uh, not trivial, but which might be banal, is that pi one is the only invariant, the only classical invariant, which is not abelian. Uh, then it 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 showed that one could focus on this on the on the stacks or on the objects which are k pi ones which have only pi ones and indeed the whole of anabelian geometry is about these objects so it's not completely it's not a coincidence that the mgns are k pi ones at this point there's there are, there are very many caveats so i i, I don't say all of them here are the caveats is that they are k pi ones when considered as uh, stacks that is you have to uh, there are there are really little literally hundreds of pages uh, beyond i mean uh, below everything i say but here you have to develop a theory of the pi one of orbifold or pi one of algebraic stacks and then uh, and then what i say is true so then you have the thing which uh, the, the the groups which topologists call mapping class groups, which we call Teichmüller groups, but it's the same thing. So the mapping class group maybe maybe uh, maybe you, you see what it is in in topology. It's basically uh, basically the 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 diffeomorphisms of SGN mod isotopy. Here, it's the pi one, it's again, a theorem. It's not a difficult theorem, this one, uh, that the two things I'm saying are, are equal. So here it's the pi one, and it's actually the orbifold pi one of MGN, okay? Uh, and then the same when, when, the, when the, the points are not labeled. So this is the orbifold fundamental, uh, the orbifold fundamental group of uh, of the above space seen as a complex as a complex orbifold. Uh, they're nothing but the mapping class group of of, of the topologist, and there's something called Teichmüller space, uh, which is contractible. That's very important too. And there is a, a stack on on a non ramified cover. Forget the word stack whenever you want because actually you're allowed to forget stack when n is large enough um, because these are, are bona fide schemes and then, uh, or varieties. Uh, then you have a, an orbifold, uh, sorry, a cover, a non-ramified cover as the type I said, and the group is gamma G. And so you have this, uh, this is how Teichmüller invented Teichmüller space. This is what Teichmüller space is uh, good for. Uh, okay, so you have all these things. Plus, you have uh, plus. Of course, we're doing algebraic geometry. Or uh, whenever you do algebraic geometry, you have to complete uh, because uh, uh, basically because algebraic geometers don't know 
anything but polynomials. So even the even if you think of just the the, the plane minus one point, I mean, where you, you just uh, the 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 etal pi one of this is is z hat. It's not z because 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 uh, the exponential is not algebraic. So these are the profinite completions of the above groups. Uh, another uh, another uh, theorem which occupies a lot of space again is a Gaga type theorem, which tells you that the the profinite completion of these groups are nothing but the geometric pi ones of uh, the object I'm, I'm on the same object. So if I uh, these objects are defined. Now, now I say these objects are defined over Q. If you define them over Q bar over C, you get as a, as a, as a, an etal uh, pi one, you get gamma gn hat. Now, uh, maybe I'll never go get to, to that point, but the fact is the, 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 the gesture of completion is much more, it's, it's usually what you do with groups and, and this is, um, what I've written here, but you can also do it with space for X. If whenever you have an X, which is a group or a space equipped with an action of a group, then you can complete the said object by doing exactly what's written here. You, you, you take an inverse system of subgroups, G lambda of G. In the case of the profinite completion, you take all the cofinite subgroup of uh, all those I say cofinite, the, so the finite index subgroups of the group G. And this is a definition of the profinite completion of a group. So if I take X equal G and capital lambda describe the system, which is an inverse system of all the cofinite subgroups of G, then I get the profi cofinite completion, profinite completion of G. But, but, and this, maybe not today, but it, it, it is very useful. It's a, it's a beautiful idea that we can do it with other objects, namely the ones which are listed below. So what are these objects which are listed below? When you have a surface, call it S, uh, sorry, the, 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 the square bracket should be SGN. Uh, then you, you define what, are, what is called the curve complex. Here, complex, where well, there are too many complexes. The complex means simplicial complex. So what is the curve complex attached to a, to a surface? It's, it's pure topology. It's just you take um, a simple curve, a loop. Uh, or, so a simple curve is an isotopy class of closed curves, uh, that is, uh, of, of loops, of which one representative is simple. So you take a simple curve. Uh, I'll, I'll show drawings below. You take a simple curve on your surface and you say, this is a, this is a, a vertex of my uh, simplicial complex. Now, uh, an edge is simply two simple closed curves which are disjoint and, uh, and you go on. So a simplex of dimension D are simply D plus one disjoint closed curves. Uh, there are two complexes, which simple, simplicial complexes, which are very important. One of them is a curve complex, which I just described, whose dimension is the same as the dimension of MGN. So it's 3G minus 3 plus N, but it's a real dimension now, uh, real for, for real in the sense of, uh, for, of over the reals. I mean, it's uh, just, uh, it's a real object. It's not a complex object. The second one is the complex of maximal multicurves. Uh, let me let, let me not say what it is now. I mean, CP of S and it has dimension two. It's also very important. Um, what what is below? What what, so what do you have? Um, why why introduce these things? These things are they're not introduced by by us. I mean, they were introduced a long time ago by someone called Harvey, 
And uh, as is often the case, uh, Jean-Pierre Serre has to do with all this. Uh, the, these are used by people in uh, my topologist studying uh, or studying moduli spaces of curves, studying their topology. They are, they are, they are very useful in, in topology. They correspond to buildings for if, if you have uh, if if it tells you something, it, it has to do with buildings in uh, uh, symmetric space for symmetric spaces. Uh, they they have to do with uh, compactifying certain things. But okay, the the thing I should say, no, I, I won't say it now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so so you have this. Let, let's let's stay with this. So these are all the objects. Well, there, unfortunately, there are still others, and that's many objects, but uh, there's not much I can do about it. And it, it's much too short, of course, to swallow all these uh, all these things. But so then you have then you have Dane twists, and I hope we'll be sort of done with this catalog, but we, you're never done with the catalog. The catalog is infinite. So what is a Dane twist? Maybe you already know what it is. So, so the, let me say the, the, the miracle is that you're, you're, you're putting together and that's, you know, I mean, when you have people like Goldsnick and Drinfeld, that's what's happening. You put together an incredible number of objects. And when you get used to them, well, you get used to them and, and, and you see that, that they, you know, it's like when you take a helicopter and you see the landscape and they say it's a big landscape. So Dane twists are, were introduced by Dane at the beginning of the 20th century. So if you have a surface and you need it to be oriented, okay? All these surfaces I, I mentioned are orientable and then you need to orient it. So you choose an, an orientation. And you have a simple closed curve on it. That is a simple loop. And probably you have, you've seen the definition of a Dane twist already. It's very simple. You, 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 you cut the, the surface open along alpha. You perform a full twist like this, of <laughs> uh, 360 degrees, 2 pi, and you glue back. And the theorem of Dane is that these generate the deformorphisms of the surface. So how does, uh, uh, so different morphism of the surface, of course, acts on simple closed curve because, I mean, because they act on the surface and so they take a curve and they move it to another curve. That's all you need. They also act on, so they act on, C, on these two, on these two simplicial complexes, although I didn't give you really the definition of, of, of the second one, but. It acts on them in a very simple way by acting on curves just because the different forces send the curve to somewhere else, to, to another curve. In particular, for twist the following holes, which you can believe, I mean, if you have a different morphism and you have a twist on the curve alpha and you conjugate it, then you get a twist on the curve f of alpha. And here is the surprise which uh, I won't have time to go really to explain, but ultimately, this is how GT acts, but you need to make sense of it. It's no more than that. That's very important in a way. You see, this action is, is completely obvious. It's been known since uh, Dane. Uh, you, you, you have a different morphism of your surface. It acts on curve by uh, f goes to f of alpha. It just transports a curve. And uh, if you, uh, if you, uh, how do you call it? If you uh, oh, conjugate tau alpha by uh, f, then this is the, the uh, this is the result. The thing which is really remarkable is that. Quaternic Teichmüller is nothing but that. Only you have to put pro in front of everything. Namely, you have to have pro complexes of curves, you have to have pro twists, you have to have pro curves. But if you do this, this is what Quaternic Teichmüller does. Uh, if, 
if I, I forget uh, lambda in quote Nick Teichmiller, but but that's not the, the difficult part. So I, here I have an F uh, on purpose because in the next slide there is an F for the definition of Walter Dick Teichmiller, which you've already seen actually, but which uh, well, I, I think Leila put it put it on the screen and I put it I'll show it again. But I think it's very important to understand, and this is. But I think it's very important to understand, and this is in some sense why this is not the only reason, but this is one of the reasons why you want to understand what I call profinite geometry. So topological quaternic Teichmann theory has to do with developing what I call profinite geometry. Profinite groups are something which have which ex which exists and have ex has existed since uh, the 1950s, and it's it's very difficult. I mean, these groups are very difficult to manipulate. And what we're trying to do is profinite geometry of surfaces. One reason being that if you do this properly, you have this. I mean, Gottenich Teichmüller is it's the, the the way it acts is completely obvious. This is be is in front of your eyes, and 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 that's it. I mean, doesn't mean it's, it doesn't solve all the problem. It makes it completely, uh, completely natural. So uh, I keep saying I'm not not the same thing, but things which are very much related again and again because there are so many angles that it, you have to get used to. Not not have to get used, but maybe it's useful to to put them in. From from various angles, so there are different ways of of of, of showing of, of say of motivating the Teichmüller theory, which I have tried already. Uh, there's this one, the the first one, which is again uh, what we've seen. I mean that the Grotenich Teichmüller group, sorry, contain the Gower group. This is functorial. This is easy to prove. What is uh, uh, if you if you refer if I refer myself again to the Oda uh, Matsumoto conjecture, which is now a theorem, uh, it, it was the, the the equality which was at the beginning that that the automorphism group of pi one g on as a functor is the Galois group, but then then you don't know what the automorphism of the Galois of, of, of pi one as a functor is, so it doesn't help much. GT hat will be contained in the automorphism group of F2 hat with a star, which means inertia preserving, which means that which means that F2 hat is defined if the free group in the free group on two generators X and Y, and the star means that X is mapped to a conjugate of X and Y is mapped to a conjugate of Y, just as is shown. Uh, uh, below, so this is uh, the low key version. Uh, this is the this is uh, these are formulas. So the formulas are nice, but the low key version is that uh, you define an element by f of x equals goes uh, equals x to the lambda, and f of y equals uh, what it is f to the minus one y to the lambda f. Um, so if lambda equals one, so in terms of in terms of uh, of uh, as I said, in terms of uh, deformation, lambda takes care of deformation of commutativity, and lambda is a very bad notation, but it's Grinfeld notation. Lambda should have been chi, because chi is the cyclotomic character, and when the and when and when f happens to be induced by an element of the Gower group, then lambda equals chi. So lambda is uh, is the extension, or maybe it's not an extension. If you believe in a, the dream uh, result, it's not an extension because GT equals GQ. But if it's an it's on, in any case, it's an extension of the cyclotomic character. So the first result, again, a, a big result, it's the beginning of class field theory, tells you that GQ is an extension of Z hat uh, cross by it's uh, by its uh, commutator group. 
this so this is a, again a very difficult theorem. Uh, so the the thing which is really new here is that deforming associativity for you you can take elements with trivial cyclotomic character that is with act trivially on the roots of unity uh, then then it ha it then uh, then the 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 quantum attachment group describe deforming associativity so deforming associativity describe the main part of the gao group which is the commut commutator uh, gq gq what, why is this related to what i said below there's a large dictionary and i can't go into it of course but uh, if you go into the papers which are on my web page and the references of these papers you will see that uh, uh, that it's uh, it's very sensible okay uh, so, sorry um, can you can you just um can you just say yeah. where does lambda and little f live and where does big f live oh sorry L lambda lives in uh, lambda lives in z hat okay uh, and and f lives in f2 hat uh, prime prime uh -huh. is not very okay. important f2 hat f2 yeah. hat and then, and then uh, big F is meant to be an arbitrary element of like. Of... And then F is F could be F is an element of F defines a, an automorphism of F two hat. Yes. Capital F. Yes. Uh, well, again, there is a caveat because you cannot say there is no as as opposing opposed. Well, in the pro unipotent setting, you can immediately say whether an element is inversible or not. Because the pro unipotent setting, you think of it as simply a uh, formal series. Is a formal series uh, inversible? Yes, if the first uh, term is invertible, if the constant term is invertible. But for, for here, there is no criterion which said that F is invertible. So unfortunately you have to say, you just say F is invertible. <laughs> And there is no no way you can you can check it, but so these are f is an endomorphism, so you you demand that it be inversible, and lambda is in uh, in c hat, and f is in uh, f two hat prime. So so I guess you're um, imagining capital F as being like um sub induced by the action of some element of G Q. Right, and then the it, it, it can, the yeah, yeah. It or... can it, if you have a, an element of GQ, then it, it gives you a capital F, which we normally we we, we denote element of GQ by sigma. Then you, we write F sub sigma as the. Then if it gives you an element of sigma, uh, it this is all about uh, these elements are prescribed by the action on uh, the P one of. The pi one of p one minus three points. So there are a whole story which would would be a, a lecture by itself. Uh, uh, the lecture on which is very close to this on that time, which is how does the Galois group act on pi one of p one minus three points, and then where you have a groupoid, and then you have a tangential base point. If you go to to uh, well, if you go to my web page and the first, the very first papers, the old papers on the subject, they, they explain this. They explain uh, the action on p one minus three points. So you can see f as f small f is related to the action of the of of your element, possibly Gawa, on uh, what Deline calls le droit chemin in French, which is the, the, the path from zero to one, okay? The, the interval. So, because you, you, you enlarge your, 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 sorry, your fundamental group to a fundamental groupoid, and then you have a path from zero to one, and that's it gives you F. This is a whole story, and it's an interesting story, and it's not a very difficult one, and, but it, it takes a, another lecture, we, we, but it's all written down. 
Um, so, what are the what are the relations? Why do we have relations? Because this these formulas again describe the 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 automorphism group basically of of the of the you take these automorphisms and you have the automorphism of pi one of p one minus three points, possibly a groupoid. But you want much more. You want this to be to be to to be an automorphism of the pi one of all the modulized stacks. So first, if you stay in genus zero, then you have these three relations. Uh, why three relations? You have two relations which comes from the first level. So the first level in M04, uh, also known as P1 minus three points. And these are the first, the first two relations. Why are there relations uh, at all? <laughs> it's because uh, you, you, you ask that it, it, it uh, Let's say it uh, it acts in a certain way on the groupoid. So I, I will not, I, I cannot uh, really dwell on that. And and the second relate, the third relation, which is the famous pentagonal relation, comes from the second level, and the second level is M zero five. So here, so M zero five. So you have five points on the sphere. And the, the pi one of this is a quotient of the of the braid group on five strands. So you need to have you need to you have a, a braid group of five on five strands. And uh, when you have a braid group, you have an elementary braid. So the strands are numbered uh, one to five. Xij. There are many things one should say because you, you should say. I mean, the, the strands can should be on a, on a straight line and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But basically, x i j is the braid which braids i and j. So it's it's, a, it's really a braid like like this braids i and j and they return to their place. So this the the, the left hand side is an element of uh, m zero five hat. Oh, sorry, I say m zero. Sorry, M05 and, and M04 is, the, is our old notation. It's gamma 04 and gamma. Oh, sorry. Gamma 04 and gamma 05. So, so sorry, it's, it's just because uh, topologies write M because um, mapping class group. But it's gamma 04 and gamma 05, which, so sorry, it's just uh, the same. It's notation. Uh, so, uh, the left hand side is gamma zero five hat, and these these are, these relations they come from um, they come from certain uh, cycles of uh, of, uh, of uh, <coughs> cycles on on these. Uh, uh, no, sorry, what I was saying no. The, these are the, the these are the spaces, but then the uh, and they should be they should be calligraphic M and calligraphic uh, they should be calligraphic. Sorry, these should be simply calligraphic M and calligraphic M, and then their 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 pi ones are gamma zero four and gamma zero five. It, it's not very well um, it's not very well said. So you have again you have the moduli stacks which are M zero four and M zero five. Guy graphics say they have pi ones, which are gamma zero four and gamma zero five. Gamma zero four is nothing but the free group on two generators. Gamma zero five is a quotient of the braid group on five strands. So the first two relations come from gamma R is inside gamma zero five for hat. The second, uh, the second. The third sorry, relation, the pentagonal relation, lives in gamma zero five hat. The first relation, the first two relations come from gamma zero four. This come from M zero four, and this third relation comes from M zero five. And the relations are, be are because you, you you trace certain path on your on your 
on your spaces, M04 and M05. And if these paths are contractible, they define uh, trivial loops. And these trivial loops should stay trivial when, 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 you, when you act on them. Uh, well, that was, uh, this is a, a little, this is a bit fuzzy, but this was, um, this, this is to explain, um, this is to explain something because there, there are so many, sorry, there's so many equivalent ways of saying it. It's a bit difficult. One way to say it, and this is the way Drinfeld said it, is that you have MacLean's uh, relations. MacLean's relations, which are uh, the, pen, the hexagons and the pentagon, MacLean's relations are relations in a braided category. And the connection is shown in the picture, which is which I'll show again. What is the connection between MacLean's relation and this these uh, these uh, uh, these relations? And MacLean's relation. Sorry for it, it's very really bad quality because it's an old slide. Uh, it's a picture of an old slide. MacLean's relation, maybe you have seen it, is, is uh, this pentagon. This pentagon is by, you have a, a bracketing pattern, and then you, you move pattern, you move uh, brackets, and you can move them in, in different ways, and then you get this cycle. Maybe you have seen it. In, on any, in, on any uh, book or article on, uh, on braided categories, you get this, you, you have this relation. And also in the paper by Drinfeld. Why is it connected with M05? Because you have, a, you have a sphere, you have five points. And then, and then you have, um, you simply move your, your loops. So I, I, this is too, too fuzzy to, to follow really, but this is exactly the same as this. That is, when you have loops and you move the loops and you move the loops and the, the cycle here is exactly the same as here. And the cycle here is gives you a, a, a path on the M05, which is contractible, which, which by definition has to be contractible. The thing to, to remember is that, uh, we're always the thing which is which is really when 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 you start looking at these things which is really annoying is you have pi one and you have the automorphism group of pi one and very often you mix up pi one and the automorphism group of pi one so remember so you have just uh, summarize again you have a surface you have the moduli space of the surfaces. You have the pi one of this moduli space, and you have the automorphism group of the pi one. And Rosenig Teichmuller is about the automorphism group of the pi one of the moduli stacks. So it takes a little uh, time to get used to it because you have several uh, levels, uh, and you you tend to somehow mix them a, a little bit. You, you get confused. It's like in Gawa theory, sometimes you, you, it's the same. It's like Gawa theory, but it's one step further because you, you, you have an automorphism group of that thing. So what happens in, um, I don't know if I have much time left, uh, maybe not much. Um, maybe five well, minutes more or you need- Five more. minutes, yeah, yeah. So the, the problem is, uh, we're, we're, we're just at the beginning of the story, to be honest, but I knew it would be this way uh, because the, 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 the next step in the story is to go to arbitrary genus. So I'll explain in, in maybe in words too. There are two more steps. One step is, go to, is to go to arbitrary genus and that's what we did with Leila, but 20 years ago already. And when you have a surface, you have a moduli stack, 
you have a moduli space, you have a Teichmuller space, you have a, you have a complex, a curve complex, you have a multi-curve complex, which I didn't even explain. And uh, you want to, you want to, uh, Grotenik Teichmuller is about the, uh, the, the automorphism group of the pi one of the geometric pi one of uh, m of s. The geometric pi one of m of s is nothing but the uh, profinite completion of gamma of s. So, um, so, 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 what is Grotenik Tashmana for any genus? Uh, I write GT, but it's not exactly the same GT. It's, it's a GT plus one relation. Um, the, the first thing you have to know is that, and this is really very much in accordance to what Goltenig writes in the Eskis. In the Eskis, Goltenig writes, you shouldn't be trying to show that, for instance, the, the Teichmuller groups are linear or that the Teichmuller groups are finitely generated, or that they have a finite presentation. But you should find a presentation which is just nice and symmetric. And that presentation exists. So you have a presentation, gamma of S is, Dane proved that gamma of S is generated by the Dane twist. And there's a very nice presentation, which is mainly due to Sylvain Gervais, where, you, you, your presentation is not at all finite since you need all the type, all the twists on all the curves. So it's not even the generators are finite. They're not a finite number of generators. They're not a finite number of relation. But the, but the, the relations are supported on small surfaces. And in fact, they are supported precisely on small subsurfaces. Huh? Okay. Because if you have a big surface, you, you can, you can, Isolate a small surface into it, a small piece, a subsurface. And the relations are supported precisely on the support on the surfaces of types 0, 4, 0, 5, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 2. So this gives um, this gives the idea, this, this is one of the main things that quantum Teichmann theory will exist. Again, I keep I keep showing you that Gaussian attachment theory should exist. The miracle is the two-level principle. The fact that you can describe by a finite number of equations, in fact, three or four for any number of genuses four. Uh, any genus is four, it's not three. But with four equations, you describe the automorphism group of the pi one of all the modular stacks of curves. This is the, the real sort of quite miracle put in group theoretic terms, which is anticipated in this case and which has been proved in, in many ways now. I mean, we have several ways of expressing it. Uh, I, I, I can of course give you the main theorem here, which is this, but I've not exactly defined this complex, which is slightly difficult, slightly, slightly, uh, cumbersome to to describe not really but but uh let's say i'll try uh, i'll not even try to do it um and the final the final um idea but again there are hundreds of pages in between is that instead of considering this let's say c of s you consider the completions of these objects if because it's normal, you complete you consider the completions of these objects, which are geometric objects. So you go, you pass from group theoretic uh, to from a group theoretic setting to a complex or graph theoretic, and this is a new and rather slippery, I mean, domain, which is really profinite geometry, and in that setting. You can rewrite this formula, which I wrote, and Jim and Grotenik Teichmuller means simply, uh, simply that you act on pro curves, and you act on pro twists, 
the way it's written, which is exactly the way any deformism acts on twists and curves, and that was uh, shown by I don't know Dane probably. So if you if you make everything, you put a pro before everything, which means you complete everything, which is far from obvious. I mean, actually, as, as I write, it's it's a rather slippery thing at the moment because you mean uh, these objects are very complicated because any profile group is complicated and it's even much more complicated when you have a, a profinite space with a with the action of a profinite group. But if you do this, if you if you do it, and you need some foundation and so on, then you can you can write it this way. And let's say I'll end with a result, which of course again is beyond what I said. Uh, the 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 thing which is which again is. Why quantum attachment theory exists? Now, now, now you may have the impression that the point of the theorem is the theory is to understand why it exists at all. But it's a miracle that it exists. That is what you can describe again. The if I refer to something back then, the left hand side, the geometric side. I can completely describe the geometric side. I don't know that it's equal to the to the arithmetic side. I know it. I know. It contained the arithmetic side. But another way to describe the geometric sign, see why it exists, is that one of the one of the one of the complexes when you complete it is rigid, whereas the other one it gives you, sorry, here should be a hat, precisely gives you a touch mirror group, the golden touch mirror group. This is I cannot, well, okay, it would be long to explain why this is uh, both surprising and very satisfying. That is why why it explains again and again why the Goldenic Tashmara uh, theory exists. Uh, the, what I call topological Tashmara theory, which I cannot really explain now, is um, the idea that instead of having only profinite groups, you will have profinite ob geometric objects and you do profinite geometry. And then you prove certain theorems, which uh, including this one, uh, including the last one here. And you have this so simple definition of Gorton dick Teichmüller, which is simply acting on pro twists the way uh, any, any different morphism used to act on twists. So I'll stop here. I cannot cover obviously the, the distance between this and of and, and, and this, uh, but I, I do believe that this is very close to what Kortendik was thinking of, or maybe was not thinking of, but it was, let's say the direction where, where which he, he showed a direction. And I think it's the same direction. And I think, I do believe the other thing the other branch of the theory uh, is just different. Very interesting, but just different. The pro-unipotent motivic theory with the one which is very much advertised via uh, multi -datas and so on. So let me stop here. Okay. Thank you very, uh, very much for that very interesting talk. Um, Thanks a lot for sharing. Maybe I'll try to say too, too much, but... It's difficult. Are there any questions? So let me just add that again, all the all the papers and the references are on, 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 on available. And it, it takes much more than an hour. I think it takes uh, many, many hours if, if you want to explain uh, uh, or if you, but orally it's much better than, than in prison. <laughs> okay, so are, you. are you going to, do, do you have any plans to give a talk on, on a more lengthy, like detailed talk on this paper? Uh, this is not one paper. Uh, yeah, on the paper oh. I just wrote, uh, I, I don't know, I could. 
but uh, there is a lot of prerequisites as usual uh, because everything I said is just a prerequisite for the last paper, <laughs> and, and and still, <laughs> I think for, from a purely social viewpoint, I think it's a pity that these things were not advertised. Some of them are twenty years old, but they're not known. And I think uh, I'll be honest with you. I think uh, this and far has been almost too much advertised because they come from uh, the, you know, I, it's completely understandable that Brotzlik was struck by the fact, again, that you have a faithful action on, a, on something which is, um, which is uh, essentially topological. First, there is an action on the Gawa group. Second, it's faithful. So it's very, good. and it's all because of Billy theorem. And Billy theorem is incredibly striking knowing that the so-called easy part of Bailey's theorem was known to André Veil, it's, 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 a, it's a tiny, it's a, a tiny uh, let's say, a special case of uh, what André Veil wrote in 1956. But what Bailey's theorem is, is totally striking. It's three pages long and, and uh, it shows in particular, that's what was striking to Colton that you have a faithful nonlinear. As soon as you go to the nonlinear world, you have a faithful action of the Galway group on something which is relatively small. But, and Dulin wrote it, you know, Dulin can be very straightforward. He said, I don't believe, I don't believe this son of our will, will lead to understanding more. And to be completely honest, I think it, there's a, a big a limit to what this and often can do. I mean, it's clear that, uh, uh, and, and Grotendieck, what he had in mind was grotendieck Dashmira theory. Uh, I didn't even mention what he says, which I, I vindicated, like uh, like the, his, his way of seeing the two level principle, which is different. It's, it's complete, it's yet another thing. But I think it's a pity that these things, which are 20 years, some of them, I mean, many, most of them are 20 years old, not, not these ones. The, the only thing which is recent is the idea of completing the, the, these complexes, these curve complexes. But the rest, and it's connected with physics, what well, physics, with, let's say, conformal field theory, uh, as far as conformal field theory is physics. <laughs> <laughs> If you call it physics, it's physics. <laughs> Maybe not nature. Okay, so thank you very much, Professor Lushak, and also uh, Professor Will Chen for the nice talk and also chairing the session, Will Chen. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So we will close the meeting now and see you sometime. Again. See you. Yeah, bye, bye. Thank you for accepting. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.